Greetings, everyone. Okay, finally wrapping up the look at the various computer parts and the associated stories therewith. Uh, yeah, today on the Multimedia Chronicles, picking up right where we left off last time. I don't even know where exactly I'm going to put the break, but it's, yeah, you already know it was all one video and I split it up into two, so yeah, okay. Enjoy today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Go. Anyway, what's left here? Got a couple of sticks of memory. Let's just swing them around so you can see the names. So we got a gig of Kingston, which is quite nice, and a gig of Elixir. The Athlon system can actually hold a total of two gigs. So that was it, maxed out. And while we're talking about that, let's take a look at the motherboard. This is the good old Mobo, which has served me well these many years. A couple of serial ATA headers on there which I never actually used. All the drives I have are IDE drives and there's the IDE controllers there, power. Um, I'm not sure what's under this heat sink actually. I couldn't find any any markings on it. I think that I actually I think that's the onboard graphics there. Um, so anyway here's the uh, the cooling beast that ultimately resulted in the death. I mean look how clean that is. Just look let me show you here. Look how clean that. Oh, yeah, trippy. Woo! I mean, look at that. There's no, there's not a speck of dust anywhere to be found in there. I mean, I even, I even cleaned off the individual fan blades and everything. I mean, it was beautiful. Yeah. So anyway, so what do you got on here? Got your AGP slot there. I, oh, sorry. Hold it up. Got your AGP slot there, which I was so excited about because I had never experienced the wonder and splendor that is AGP. And uh, apparently that was very short-lived Wonder and Splendor because AGP seems to have disappeared as quickly as it came. Uh, then we got three PCI slots, which were almost always full. Like I say, I love my PCI cards. Got a lithium battery in there, which I should probably take out because I think I can use that with some other devices. What else? Oh yeah, and then of course the... Uh, it doesn't really matter what I do with this because it's useless now. Uh, and then we got the two RAM slots there, so you could fit a maximum of one gig per slot. Um, it's funny because the specs that I found online said you could actually only fit, I think, one gig total, like 512 per slot, but I put a gig in there and uh, I had no problems with it. I had two gigs, the system recognized it as two gigs, it can hold two gigs, go figure. And then on the back here we got, uh, what do we have here? Wow, these are some old ports, what's this, a serious, is this a parallel port? Or serial, I think it's a serial port. Anyway, uh, I got a mouse. Is that a mouse? Port? I don't even know what these. I don't even remember what these ports are. It's been so long. <laughs> Does it say anywhere on there? VGA. Oh, COM one. Sorry, that's a serial port. That's an old serial port. So I guess that's an old uh, parallel port, like for a printer. LPT. Yeah, that's a printer port. That's what I thought. Okay, and then you got your. Uh, keyboard and mouse. I can never remember which is which. Then what else you got? You got your Ethernet port of course and four USB ports on the back. It's quite nice. Another Firewire. This this is one of the things I loved about this board is uh, like this computer in general is it was all about the Firewire. It had the Firewire in the front, Firewire in the back, and I had a Firewire card which I could plug in there and get even more Firewire. Just Firewire up the wazoo. And then uh, three here for the uh, onboard audio. I forget what the onboard audio was. It was Realtek AC97. Okay, I guess I did remember what the onboard audio was. Yeah, Realtek is good. I, I never really had any issues with the onboard audio. Um, a little bit. I think there was a little bit of snapping and popping in there from time to time. <sighs> yeah, still a little bit of dust on there, but anyway. Yeah, so I wanted to use the sound card. Sorry, I probably should have angled it up a bit because I keep disappearing. What else? Anything else? Oh yeah, we got a couple things here. Um, this is going to make you, well, the second one will make you laugh here. So we got uh, basically a case fan. I don't know why I took this out, because I'm keeping the case. Because So this is just going to be going right back into the case. So that was just a waste of time. Uh, obviously before I thought of actually doing that. Now, interesting story with this particular case fan. Okay, this is a brand new case fan. This, uh, I haven't even had this thing for, I think, 
not even like a month. Let me just make sure. Yeah, it's beautiful. Look at this. You can't hear a thing. Listen. See? Listen. There. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's beautiful. This is a brand new three speed adjustable case fan. It actually has a little switch on it that lets you adjust the, uh, the speed. The reason I got this is because, and here's a little rocket fish grill that goes over top of it. Now the reason I got that was because the first sign of impending death of my PC was the fan on the power supply. I actually have a 700 watt power supply, another component that I replaced a while back. The fan on the power supply started to make this high-pitched squeaking sound. Now I've had case fans die before, so I know the telltale signs of when it's dying. So I knew that sound, and I knew that it was only a matter of time, and I thought, oh crap, like the fact that it's the power supply fan is something that yeah, I really can't delay. So I didn't have 20 bucks to spare, but I had to spare it. So I found 20 bucks, I think I dipped into the rent money a little bit for that one and uh, ran off to the store and grabbed a case fan. Fortunately, it just used a 120 millimeter fan. I looked up the specs online and said it was 140 millimeter, which was wrong. <laughs> so the specs on the Rocketfish website are wrong for that model of power supply. Yeah, so it was actually just a regular 120 millimeter fan. Now, but the problem was, okay, I, I found the right size of fan, but it was a case fan, not a power supply fan. They both perform the same function. But here was the problem, is the, um, the pins, I don't have the old fan anymore so I can't show you, but the pins, see this is a three pin, all right, three pin, and then you got a four pin thing for uh, power, okay? Or you can go through that, you can go through either one, basically, depending on what kind of connector you have and what you're using it for. Now, the problem is the power supply fan uses a two pin and that is like the control cable that controls the speed of the fan based on how hot the power supply is and what the demands are for cooling so like you know how much fan it needs to cool it down so i thought well okay whatever i can just use that case fan and i'll just leave it on maximum speed all the time and this thing is so quiet i mean you don't even know that it's on half the time i mean it's just it's beautiful beautifully quiet so problem was <sighs> I wanted to use the fan as a case fan for the new setup. And I really didn't feel comfortable leaving it in the power supply, even though I knew it was doing a fine job of cooling. So, yeah, this is like, look at this crazy octopus of doom here. This is like how many devices you can hook up to this power supply. I mean, it's just nuts. Let me see if I can find all of them. There, look at that. Look at all those things you can hook up to it. So anyway, I needed to get the fan off the power supply, right? And it uses these, this is one thing I hate, is most computer components use metric screws, which are beautiful because they're, they're correctly formed to the hole and the hole is correctly molded to the screw and everything just fits together perfectly and there's no struggling and twisting, turning and stripping screws. The frickin' case fan screws are like wood screws. So you wrench them into the plastic, forcing the plastic to mold to the screw. And okay, I gotta say something here. I really hate Phillips heads. Okay, this is one of the screws. You can barely see. Phillips head is the uh, the star-shaped ones, all right? Everybody says, oh no, but the Phillips head is great because, you know, it grips the screwdriver better. No, it doesn't. And I'll tell you why. Because you get a Phillips head screw that doesn't want to turn and you're having to force it harder and harder, you end up destroying that beautiful grippy star and then, then what do you do? You're screwed. No, you get a flat head, people are like, oh, the flat head's always slipping out. Yeah, well, only if you're an idiot who doesn't know how to use a screwdriver, okay? Just pay attention to what you're doing, and it's fine. Flat heads are great because they never strip. They can't. It's impossible for them to strip. Beautiful, all right? Uh, you want to know the best one, a lot of people don't think it is, but it is, is the Robertson. Yes, Robertson is the square, all right? People think, oh, the square, that would strip so easy. No, it doesn't. 
it just doesn't. It is rock solid. You have the most metal on each side, giving you more support. I mean, look at a look, look at a Phillips head. You got that little star, right? Little tiny sticks of metal in between the spokes of the star. No, with Robertson, you got solid, hard metal on each side of that square, man. That square is not stripping. That is one solid screw. I think I think Phillips head should just be done away with, and everything should go like Robin, Robert, yeah, Robertson. Anyway, the reason I ramble about this is because one of the screws that I used to put the case fan in to the power supply refused to come out. So I had to get a little bit creative with the top of the power supply to get the damn fan out. Yeah. Now the actual power supply itself is fine and still works great, but the problem is I don't have a proper fan for it. So this is more or less a fully functional 700 watt power supply and I'm sure if I banged the... Uh... <sighs> now this is all very thin metal and you can actually mold it with your hand. So, you know, I could probably bang this back into shape and get it to fit again without too much trouble. But then there's the problem of the fan. I just don't have the fan, the proper fan for it. So, that's that. Oh, and I think that's everything. Yeah, that's everything. Wow, it only took like 20 parts. Oh, alright, well, we'll throw it to be continued on this. Figuratively, not literally, because I don't know when it'll be continued. So sometime this week, I'm expecting all the parts to arrive. Everything was shipped as of this morning, I believe. I got the notification yesterday that it was being shipped today. So I'm basically just waiting for everything to arrive, and then I will do the obligatory, Hey, let's put together the new computer video! And uh, I will record live the first ever boot up which probably won't be that exciting because it won't have an operating system yet, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then I'll film all 12 hours of me reinstalling all my software. Yay! No. No, no. I won't do that. I'll show you the hardware part of it, but not the software part, because the software part is, quite frankly, boring as hell and goes on forever. Yeah. Oh, if you're wondering what operating system I'm getting, Windows 7. Yeah, because, um... Yeah, that was actually another thing I did with the uh, with the Pentium 3, was I upgraded to Windows XP, hoping that that would help. It didn't. I upgraded to Windows XP Home Edition. Uh, well, actually, it did help a little bit. It was more stable than Windows 98. Yeah, the blue screen of death and I were very good friends who knew each other quite well. But with the Compaq, I actually switched over to XP Pro, which was great. I've you know really had no issues with it whatsoever. Once in a blue moon, it would freeze but very, very infrequently. I mean, it was like a godsend compared to the P3. I mean, the P3 was just freezing. It, it was a daily occurrence. It would freeze several times a day. It was horrible. Just a horrible system. Um, but I'm pretty sure it was due, you know, faulty hardware and not really a fault of it being a PC, per se. Because the Compaq has been great until I put in the heatsink backwards. <laughs> But it's amazing how far you can stretch 500 bucks when you're looking to put together a new computer. I mean, do a little do-it-yourself and you can save some money. Yeah, so it's great. I should mention also the other thing was this um, particular CPU here is the fastest that could fit on this motherboard. So I upgraded everything else as much as I could. I maxed out the memory, I put in a graphics card, replaced the sound card, put in more ports, and bigger hard drive, bigger power supply. Yeah, I, I mean, I had literally reached the threshold of how far I could upgrade that system. So really, it's technically time to upgrade. It's past time to upgrade to something better. So looking forward to rocking the new quad core, and especially looking forward to it not taking forever and a day to do videos anymore, which would be nice. Oh, alrighty, so... I'll talk to you guys when the new computer arrives. In the meantime, uh, I'll probably do some more reviews or something. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, thanks for watching. So until next time, sayonara.